This is a regular toilet and everything you see here and here is my attempt to make it smart enough to be able to tell you if you have any kind of disease. All you need to do is pee like you normally would. You could be sitting or standing, you could be a guy or a girl. Because all it really does is just analyze your pee right before you flush it. It's really just made up of two parts. The first part is called a funnel and that's where your pee is collected. The second part is called the analysis chamber and that is where the analysis happens and all the results will show up on this little screen right here. Theoretically, this screen right here will be able to tell you if you're at risk of any kind of disease like kidney stones, diabetes, STDs, or maybe even cancer. Now, if you're wondering why I go through all this trouble, let's go back to where this all started, the doctor's office. I walk into the clinic and the nurse asked me to pee in a cup, so I do. She then asked me to pay a small fee, sign some papers, so I do. She asked me to hand over my pee, but before I do, have a quick look at it and I realized I drove 15 minutes to get here, had to wait 20 minutes in the waiting room, had to have an awkward conversation with the nurse, pee for a minute, and now I have to drive another 15 minutes back home. On top of all that, I have to wait a week to get back my results. There's gotta be a better way to figure out what is going on inside my body. What if I can take everything that's inside this clinic and just somehow put it on top of my toilet? Can't be that hard. Yeah, I was wrong. Looking back at this project, it ended up being a lot harder than I thought. But back then, being the optimistic person that I am, I decided to give it a shot and see what happens. Another reason for why I did this project was because I studied mechanical engineering at the University of Waterloo. And my university requires me to create an engineering project that uses all the information that I've learned in the last five years of engineering. And they call this project a final year capstone design project. I could have done something basic, but I wanted to do something that I'd be proud of. I also felt that there was an actual need for something like this, and with school being entirely virtual, I just had more free time so I could tackle a tougher project. But I couldn't do this project alone, so I worked with a few of my friends who also happened to have an engineering background to get this project working and create our first prototype. But before we get into designing and building our first prototype, we first had to see if something like this already existed. Now today, the most common way to see what's going on inside your body is to pee in a cup but it's really intrusive and inefficient and it's also not like you can do this every day or every week. I've also heard of stories of people getting stage fright when it's time for them to pee in a cup and you know I guess it's a little intimidating to pee in this little 100 milliliter container. There's also at home pee tests that you can do where essentially a company will mail you this package. Inside the package it would be a strip of paper called a dipstick that you would essentially be peeing on. It can also come with a cup that you would pee in as well. Once you're done peeing on the paper and inside the cup, you would then mail the stuff back to the company and within a few weeks they'd mail you back your results. What I like about this is you can basically analyze your pee in the comfort of your own home. But what I don't like about this is it's really counterintuitive. Like why can't I just take the pee from the toilet and just analyze it instead of having to go through all this effort? Why do I have to do this messy approach of peeing in a cup or on a piece of paper? It's just so intrusive. I also came across this product called the Toto Intelligent Toilet 2 and it's the closest thing I've found that analyzes your pee from the toilet itself. It can apparently analyze and monitor sugar levels in your urine, your blood pressure, your body weight, your body temperature, your hormone balance, but as cool as it is, it costs almost $10,000 and it was discontinued recently for ethical reasons. Anyways, it seemed like there was nothing out there that already existed that could basically analyze your pee from the toilet itself, which motivated me and my friends to get this project started until we came across our first design issue. We had initially assumed that all we needed to do was create a chip that we would put at the bottom of the toilet bowl and it will analyze the pee for us and give us all the results that we needed. But we soon realized that we needed to analyze the urine before it hit the water at the bottom of the toilet bowl. The reason we need to do this is for us to get accurate results. So initially we started sketching out a bunch of concepts on how to do this. But if there's one thing I learned in the last five years of engineering is that we should take these big projects and break them down into smaller, more manageable tasks. We did this by breaking this project into five functions. With these five steps laid out and after six months of brainstorming, designing and building with my team, we have this. Once it's built, to get started, all you need to do is stick the funnel to the front of your toilet. Then stick the analysis enclosure to your toilet tank. Then register your fingerprint and let the device know your basic information along with the angle you'd like to set for the funnel. And you're all set. Here are the basic elements. For starters, when you enter the washroom, we want a way to tell the toilet that you're ready to pee. We could have used motion sensors or fingerprint sensors, but for this particular application, we decided to go with a fingerprint sensor as you see right here. That way it knows who is peeing and can allow each person using this toilet in the house to be able to like, have their own set of data. 
Right after you put your finger on the device, it now knows you're here and the funnel will immediately lower down. But I know what you're thinking. What if I missed funnel? The funnel covers over 30% of the toilet and it's very rare for someone to miss hitting this entire area, no matter how bad you are at aiming. Also, the device only needs 10 milliliters of pee to be able to analyze it. And on average, we will pee at least 50 milliliters every time we go in. So collecting the pee isn't the issue here. But if we look closer at the design of this funnel, we'll see that it converges to a single point right here. This point is connected to the tube underneath the funnel. And this tube will come out right here and this will lead it all the way up to the analysis chamber where the analysis will begin. Inside the funnel we have a separate driver and a separate motor that is connected to an Arduino inside the analysis chamber above the toilet tank. This controls the rotation of the funnel. If you choose to not use the funnel, it will be in its stored position, and if you need it, it will extend for you. Now, having a closer look at the enclosure up here, we'll see that it is made out of plastic and was laser cut to give it the shape that you see right here. Inside here, we have two sensors and three pumps. Let's have a look inside. The first sensor we'll look at is the color sensor, which is hidden right underneath this white piece of plastic. And the purpose of it is to tell us what color the pee is, and it will range from different shades of yellow. Once we have the shade of yellow for the P, it will communicate that to Arduino and will correlate that with a hydration level. That will basically tell us how hydrated that person is. The second sensor we'll look at is the pH sensor, which is located right here and looks like a black cylinder. This sensor will tell the Arduino what the pH level of your P is. If your pH level is too low, it could be a sign of diabetes or diarrhea, but if your pH level is too high, it could be a sign of a urinary tract infection or kidney failure. Next, we have three pumps. One, two, three. One pump, this one right here, transfers pee from the funnel to the analysis chamber into the small black box right here where the analysis happens. After the sensors are done analyzing the pee, the second pump right here transfers the pee from this black box back into the toilet where it's flushed out. Finally, this third pump right here is used to move cleaning solution, which is in this box, through the entire system after the person finished using the toilet. That way it cleans out pee entirely from the entire device. One issue we ran into was that the color sensor and the pH sensor need about a minute to give accurate readings. But the pee will just flow by the sensors really quickly and not give the sensors enough time to analyze it. That's where this solenoid valve comes in. This valve is closed and doesn't allow pee to pass through it until the analysis is complete. So essentially, P will stay in this box until the analysis is done. Once the analysis is done, the sonar valve allows P to go through it and then it'll eventually get flushed out, out into the toilet. Once the analysis is done, the screen will let you know how hydrated you are, how many times you peed today and how long it's been since your last washroom visit. We'll also provide a history of your hydration and pH levels and end up by telling you how many cups of water you should drink and if your pH levels are normal or if you need to see a doctor soon. Once all that is done, the system automatically cleans itself and flushes out all toxins ready for your next visit. After the cleaning solution cleans the entire system, the funnel will now move to its stored position. That way, if you want to use the toilet without the funnel getting in the way, you can do so. One of the challenges we had with this project was making sure fluids like water, pee, and cleaning solution don't mix with the electronics and wiring that we had throughout the entire system. So we needed to do something to make sure both of them don't mix or get in contact with each other. As I'm sure you've always heard growing up, that water and electricity don't mix. So we did three things to make sure that they never made contact. First, the box inside the analysis chamber where the urine is analyzed and the funnel were both 3D printed. Now, 3D printing is cool because it can allow us to create these complex shapes and it's honestly not that expensive. But the issue with 3D printing is based on how, you know, the manufacturing process for it is, there's always small pores and small holes that are in the shapes. So that can easily allow for water to go through them and get in contact with the electronics inside the shape. So one way we went around that is we bought black and white sealant. We used the black sealant to cover the box inside the analysis chamber and the white sealant to cover the funnel. And that way we made sure that there was no cross-contamination between the water or any kind of fluid and the electronics or wiring. Third, we used a type of pump called a peristaltic pump. This pump is connected to a motor that rotates the fluid from one location to another. This pump kept fluid sealed and prevented any fluids from leaking out of the tubes. Another cool thing about this pump is that it's reversible. So fluid can move in both directions and honestly, that just made it easier to code. Everything you saw in this project was merely just a prototype. Most of it worked, but we had one issue of cleaning the system. What would happen is when we had the cleaning solution move through the entire system, only about 90% of it would get clean and there would be a little bit of pee left at the end of each use. 
And the reason I put P around quotation marks was because we didn't actually use P in the demonstration for this. For ethical reasons, we just use water with food coloring, with yellow food coloring. So going forward, the cleaning system over here will definitely need to be improved. So far, all this prototype can really do is tell you how hydrated you are and inform you if you're at risk of any type of disease like dehydration, diabetes, kidney stones, UTIs, etc. And it does this just based on your pH level and the color of the pee that it collects. Going forward, it would be incredible if we can somehow use this project to tell someone if they're pregnant based on their pee. Now, the hormone HCG is what's used in over-the-counter pregnancy tests to tell girls if they're pregnant. So if you can input a sensor inside this project that can indicate whether or not the urine has that particular hormone, then all girls will be able to know whether or not they're pregnant in the comfort of their own home and they can track it whenever they want. And the reason I bring this up is because I posted a clip of this project working on TikTok and I got an overwhelming amount of comments asking if they can make, if this can possibly work with pregnancy. So it's definitely something that I think is really interesting and I honestly want to try sometime. So hopefully you enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun to make and shout out to my team where we all work together to get this project done in eight months. Anyways, I hope this brought you, brought you some kind of value and thanks for watching. Peace.